last video, uh, I realized that we covered a lot in regards to multi-tiered systems of support. And I realized that a five to 10 minute video uh, may not be uh, adequate to cover all the aspects of multi-tiered systems of support, which is why I included a lot of examples in the text and flow charts, uh, for example, and, and other speakers in these videos. Um, but the real difference between multi-tiered systems of support and models such as response to intervention and PBIS is that multi-tiered systems of support, as talked about earlier, is really uh, a framework of intervention service delivery models. So for example, we have attendance, academic, social, emotional, and behavioral. Multi-tiered systems of support houses uh, each of those models. Um, for example, within uh, multi-tiered systems of support, we have response to intervention, uh, which is uh, a service delivery model for providing evidence-based interventions uh, to children and, and students and providing a framework for teachers to follow in regards to what to do if a child is having difficulty and is struggling with their academics and reading, writing, or math, and etc. Um, so with response to intervention, obviously we use progress monitoring, we use universal screening, and we use evidence-based interventions to help the child succeed and grow and learn in their academic environment. Again. Uh, models uh, and multi-tiered systems of support is the framework that houses response to intervention and PBIS. And PBIS and response to intervention and social emotional support are simply service delivery models and pathways to help students learn, grow, and succeed, uh, not only in school, but also in their community, because we know that a lot of the skills that they learn in school transfer out into the community as well. And we want to make them as productive as possible uh, for future employment and, and uh, you know collegiate attainment and whatever else they may want to do with their lives. So let's a little bit let's review really what we kind of covered so far. And we noticed that as I said in the last video, all response to or all multi-tiered systems of support models have commonalities. And those commonalities, as I said, every single one of those models, uh, PBIS response to intervention. Um, social emotional support have commonalities. They each share this. They share instruction, they share universal screening, share progress monitoring, intervening early, evidence-based interventions, fidelity, and of course, database decision-making. Um, and when we look at that, I'm gonna take you through exactly, you know, one of the models, which is the most common. And we already got into this a little bit, which was in regards to response to intervention. Um, but I'm going to look at, and we're going to dissect response to intervention a little bit more. As I said before, response to intervention is a service delivery model for students who are not responding to interventions. Uh, response to intervention, PBIS, are not special education referral models. Uh, they are models to provide increasing levels of support for students who are not responding uh, to the evidence-based interventions that we are providing them. Uh, now, that said, uh, response to intervention, PBIS, social emotional support can give us a lot of data in terms of seeing whether a child is responding to the interventions provided. And that may mean that a child may have an underlying uh, deficit uh, in learning, in behavior, in social emotional domains uh, that may warrant special education services. Again, like I said before, it is not a special education referral model, uh, nor is your CST <laughs> uh, special education or step to special education. CSTs and RTI are models both to provide students uh, the best support and provide any brainstorm interventions along the way. So let's take a uh, response to intervention and dissect it a little bit. And we did this a little bit earlier, but let's show what response to intervention is. It's a series of pathways to follow on whether a child responds or does not respond to intervention, obviously. And through my research, uh, I found you know a best evidence-based model for that and put it in a flow chart for you folks. So this is what it looks like. Okay, there's response to intervention. I know it looks like a lot, but don't forget, every one of these multi-tiered systems of support models shares those common factors of progress monitoring, implementing with fidelity, universal screening, progress monitoring, I think I already said that. Um, but they all share commonalities. Uh, and when we zoom in on multi-tiered systems of support, or I mean response to intervention, what we see is some of those commonalities that they all share. Well, conduct and evaluate universal screening. If the student meets progress, we're still implementing the core curriculum. If the student is not meeting progress, uh, we are going to try and first and differentiate instruction, meet with our teacher PLC team, 
to devise and discuss three interventions, check the child's attendance in medical, and consult with parents to provide parent, parents interventions they can do at home, possibly. I would say, you know, at this point we could track data for four to six weeks, document the interventions, and if the student is responding to those interventions, they might not need a CST team meeting. They might be fine. And again, you just go back to tier one of implementing core curriculum. For those students who are not responding to that intervention, uh, what I would suggest is, of course, meeting with the school psychologist and the CST team to evaluate data and determine, uh, you know, what type of tier two intervention we want to provide. Obviously, tier two interventions, you're implementing and monitoring uh, for 30 to 45 minutes of instruction three to five times per week, and you're collecting at least 12 to 14 data points to see whether the student is responding to that intervention on a bi-weekly or weekly basis. I would suggest the more data points, the better. Maybe provide it on a weekly basis if you can, if you have the ability to. That would be great to show whether the student is progressing. If the student is not progressing, you have two choices. Uh, the first choice would be to provide an alternative intervention. The second choice would be to try uh, to, to refer to a Tier 3. Uh, when you suggest an alternative intervention, of course, you're going to try again 12 to 14 weeks of data to see if the child is responding to a Tier 2 intervention that you proposed. And if the child is, well, then they're going to go back to implementing the core curriculum and they don't need Tier 2 services anymore. If they are not responding, you're going to go right down to Tier 3. All right? Tier 3, same thing, meet with the CST team, propose some interventions, uh, track at least 12 to 14 uh, data points uh, on a weekly basis, uh, I would say. Uh, put poll groups of 1 to 3 students, put them in poll groups of two to, uh, 1 to 3 students, and do it for 9 to 30 week cycles of intervention. Uh, with that being said, if the student does not respond to intervention, you're going to meet with your CST team again, uh, and you're going to try another intervention. If not, uh, you're going to take the student, and if the student is making progress, you're going to go back down to, of course, uh, Tier 1 instruction. And I know that this is a lot to cover, but again, it always follows that pattern. A quick note, uh, I noticed that a lot of districts uh, across New York State, and, and a lot of districts across the United States that I've worked in, uh, are not cl collecting accurate amounts of data. You know, usually they typically collect four to six weeks of data, or six to eight weeks of data, and even our state agencies, we, you know, data collection is... is you know, one of the hardest components for anybody to implement, but it is critical uh, that we track the evidence-based amount of 12 to 14 data points uh, to see whether the child is responding to instruction. Um, with that being said, you know, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of what response intervention looks like, and uh, we'll meet up again uh, later on in this book to discuss some of the difficulties about implementing response intervention and multi-tiered systems of support in your schools that I, I know uh, you folks are probably wondering what those are and already probably have some ideas of what those may be. But uh, one good place to start for remediating those deficits within the multi-tiered systems of support model is to consult with your school psychologist who really is an expert in database decision making, uh, progress monitoring, evidence-based interventions, research-based practices, and how to do that. Um, you know, and we'll talk about them and their implementation a little bit further. And of course, you know, the teachers and how they can help out too. Uh, they are a great resource, too, in uh, being key players to response to intervention and how to perform it and multi-tiered systems of support in general. So I thank you for watching this video, and uh, we'll meet up later. Thanks. Bye.